Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Southwest Hearts Community TV show which is about the history of Southwest Hearts uh, and as ever I have our fount of all knowledge David with me. Come say hello David. Good afternoon Chris and everybody. Fount of knowledge. Hmm. Remains so, to be seen. So tell us what, people what's... Sorry? Uh, mind up on that. sorry? So people can make their own minds up about my, my amount of knowledge and the fount. Well, I mean, we, 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 we do know that uh, actually the amount of knowledge that people have of, of uh, the local area, uh, including including me and people who've lived here for, for decades, actually you only know what you know and there's so much stuff out there, so much knowledge for us to pick up. We live well, in a I really... We're learning everything, so, you know, something new virtually every every time we do a programme, which is, is great for me, great for, for you and everybody else. That, uh, if if it wasn't there in the in the in the eye focal point that then people just won't know about it absolutely right so um, so today what what we, we did last time we were on uh, we're a bit late doing this because of uh, technical issues and me not being here etc etc so we're a bit later than normal doing this but last time we did croxley what what have we got in store today we've got bushy today okay Lovely bushy just the other side of the uh, it starts at Bushy Arches and goes all the way up to sort of Stanmore Hill. A vast area, lots of history there. And uh, I've had an interesting time learning about the history. And I want to give big thanks at this time to the staff at the Bushy Museum, who were very helpful and allowed me to take some photographs in there, which you will see during the course of this program. Not a thing that is normally allowed to be done. But uh, for the sake of uh, the television program and bringing history to people, they gave me that uh, privilege. Well, it would be really good to. Uh, do they have a website? Do they have any information that we can share with with uh, with the, the well, community? They have a website, and the, there's um, a group called Friends of Bushy Museum, which are a good a good place to start for people. Um, it tells you all about their ex exhibitions that they have on and what they're doing, um, meetings, exhibitions, outings, events, and I was just saying uh, all inquiries about friends outings contact Ann Eames on 020 895 02609 and that gives you a com comprehensive list of what they're doing from January through to June so it's something there for everybody I've mentioned one of the exhibitions that is on now but it is finishing fairly shortly so unfortunately you can't or won't be able to see the exhibition for much longer but there is a publication about that particular exhibition which i'll come to later brilliant well when we, we must um include this museum in the history on the southwest hearts community hub because uh, i wasn't aware that they had a website so uh so that's something that we need to make sure well, happen. I, I did speak to the administrators there and the, um they, they had it now have the link through to the link for growth community hub right okay thank you very pleased to, to see and um, I'm sure we will be hearing from them after they've seen the program because I explained to them the program was there to try, try and draw people into the museum for them. Fabulous stuff. Okay, brilliant. Thanks for, for, for that introduction. So um, you've amassed a few uh, pictures for us and uh, we, we, we have made a bit of a faux pas in the past in, in this bit because uh, uh, I haven't had to focus in the right place, but I intend to rectify that on this particular show. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go and share. We're going to go and share the screen now. I'm going to put the, the um, focus on me, so we don't switch back to you all the time. So here we go. Um, let me share the screen, and we're going to go into Bushy, and we're going to have a look at this first picture. Right, I'm just going to get that on. As big as it can go so there we go so uh can you see that picture okay david yeah i can see that it's fine it's great just as a uh, good as the one i got uh, this is one i the picture i actually got off facebook believe it or not from the, the watford histories thing uh, this is what is now the entrance to the lincolnsfield center which is a, a complex of various community activities and this was taken obviously during the second world war where the u.s army 32 division triple a brigade had their headquarters and one of the people that uh, were was at the or was at the headquarters was one chap by the name of Eisenhower. 
and I have ha had it on good authority that whilst this was where their headquarters was, he was billeted down at uh, Wall Hall, which became the college and now a housing complex just over in, down the road in Aldenham. Right. So, but, so in actual fact, this entrance hasn't changed a huge amount. There's a golf course down here now, though, isn't there? And, golf course um, is just off on the left, and the road is slightly different. There's still that split. I mean, where you can see the car going up there now, that, that would be the exit from the site. It's right. now one where you go in to the left and follow, the, follow it around and you come out at that point. But it could well be on the right hand side there because of the Americans driving on the right. Yeah, interesting. Um, and um, of course, there's a huge amount that goes on down in this area, isn't there? They've, um, the, there's the whole Lincoln's Field sort of 40s experience. Which goes right, on. Yeah. Once or twice a year, there's the 1940s exhibition. Um, so it's very well worth going down there and, and seeing what life was like in the 40s um, when the Americans were here. There is one story that I keep hearing time and time again, that because the American army were based here, that somewhere underneath all of this is a big store of American vehicles. But nobody's been able to find it. The question... <laughs> there with your, your metal detector. <laughs> well, the, the question to ask really is that... Um, this story goes that it was in Bushy, but the Americans also had a base at Bushy Park in Kingston-upon-Thames. Right. Now, whether it's there or whether it's here, it's, um, it's a moot point. I mean, they've never found it here in, in the, what have we got, 60, nearly 70 years since the end of the war? So mm. it could be uh, it could be there, well hidden, concreted in, you can't see it, but... Uh, it would be lovely if it was and we could find it and have all those uh, fantastic vehicles there. It's a yeah. bit like they did in, in Singapore where they found a lot of crated Spitfire kits. Right. 16 <laughs> Spitfires all crated up in parts ready to be re built once they, they reached their destination. Now, if you had that sort of thing here, that would be absolutely phenomenal for the history of the area. Yeah, yeah. Interesting stuff. Right, okay, shall we move on to the next one? Uh, this is just across the road very... from there. This was the um, International and American University in Europe. A very impressive building. Uh, as you can see, it's it's now, again, a housing complex. But it's a, a very... Is, it, very is, that finished? is that finished yet? Or... Sorry? Is it finished yet? I don't think so. I think there are still signs up there talking about it because it's extending far and beyond the actual um, original buildings. I think they've even got a road coming out down Aldenham Road at the roundabout by the David Lloyd Centre. Right. Because this used to be just the, the entrance entrance way in and out. Right. And what did they? What was this for? This college? What did they actually teach you? Well, originally, it was a university um, for. Um, basically Americans living in Europe and a lot of them obviously were still here after the war and things like that and the place for them to send their kids to the university. Right. And it became an international one. It, it's served many, many purposes I think in its time and it is a great centre for filming. Now some of the things that have been filmed there is uh, Monty Python's Meaning of Life. Right. Lucky Jim. Indiana Jones, filmed here. Really? Yeah, Thunderbirds. Part, Thunderbirds were filmed in one of the, 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 I think it was the laboratory buildings within the complex. Right. Judge John Deed, Martin Shaw. And it was used as his gigs and uh, entrance into court, courtrooms. <laughs> within. So it, 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 it served a, a lot of film, filming. I mean, it's very near, at the time, obviously, to Elstree Studios. Mm. And it's a great period building to be able to use in things like that. Where was it actually built? Wasn't it at one point the Masonic School or something? It was the Royal Masonic School for Boys. Right. That's the original purpose of it. Um, but that's a long time ago because we, we, they, they moved, I think they moved to Bushy Hall at one stage because, again, the Bushy Hall School, if you've ever been there, is, again, a place just down the road from here that's been used for filming. As well because of the, the, the cloisters in the school which um, make it uh, around that same sort of era as this one so it could be that when they move from here to a smaller premises uh, just down the road in bushy hall 
Yeah, really, uh, really interesting building. I haven't actually been in it, but uh, um, it's been there uh, obviously for all my life. So yeah. quite, a lot of people drive past these things and never know what the hell they're for, you know. No, I mean, there's no actual signage out there to, to denote what it is or was. It's just a matter of um, a lot of its local legend. I mean, from my point of view, the film and, and the fact that it was the university and what have you are there for us to read in history books. But um, to, to know it was a, a site for so many films, and I'm sure it will be again in the future because of the actual type of building it is. I mean, more for external shots, I should think, uh, if they're doing a, a sort of period type uh, drama. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so moving on. Another lovely building. Lovely building, Bushy House in the, the High Street at Bushy. Um, very strange house really this was originally built the building dates from 1810 this particular one which replaced an earlier 17th century building which was right. one silas titus who was uh, an mp in the area the thing about this house is one it's meant to be haunted um there's a couple of towers at the back you can just see to the top right of the picture the part of the tower from the back of it where yeah, someone I mean, uh, that looks like it's a different building, but it's the same building, is it? It's the same building, yeah. There, there were additions done to it. So the original one was 17th century, and this one was done in the early 19th well, century. Whereabouts is this exactly? Um, if you go through the, the shops in Bushy towards the top, do you know you know the, the golf complex? Yeah. Just before there on the right hand side, it is now a care home. Bo Bo oh, okay. care home. So it's just there, but in the, the garden, which um, the first company I owned, Workability, did a lot of work in the garden to do some restoration because at the bottom of the garden is a lake, a lake like no other. It is artificial. Right. And it's filled from a stream going down from the house with a tap at the top of it. Right. All the boulders down there are made of concrete and wire, so they're not real rocks or anything like that. And part of the landscaping on the left-hand side, there's a sort of a, a hill and mound type thing. And part of the landfill for that site right, was the original Queen's Park Rangers artificial football pitch. Behind me. This is buried under there. It, it supposedly has some royal connection. Um, one of the kings had a, an unfaithful wife, which he, he put there. And going down to the from the house to the, the, the lake is... Um, a road walk where someone can walk down from the house unobserved and anybody down the bottom would not be observed either. Right. So, Are you Are you I, I, I will not confirm that in any way, shape or form. Um, allegedly, I think is the word to use. <laughs> Give it a go. Give it a go. <laughs> okay, so that, yeah, I've not actually been to that building, but a uh, very nice I, looking building. And, I do uh, have something which I gained from when I was with Workability, and I don't know if you can see that there, which is all, uh, a booklet all about Bushy House, which is something that uh, the museum haven't got, and I was showing it to them, and they were very interested in it, and perhaps I will leave it with them for some time to, for them to do some more research on it, but it tells a lot about it and the time. Well, have you got a picture of that, David? It, no, it's the, the only pictures I've got are, very, uh, are basically very poor quality photocopies, right? Almost like pen and ink, and they, they they wouldn't transfer in this day and age. I mean, if I think there's some in here that uh, sort of validate that that point, but um, there, there are various maps in there of, of the site and how it was. But um, Princess Alice came down one day to to the site, and you see that that's what happens with the quality of the pictures. Uh, we can't see them at the moment because we're um yeah you could, well you can see what i've got on there but they are they're not all that good quality okay this is a, a booklet that i don't think has actually been published okay good that's something that i just ha happen to have okay um so uh well maybe we can do some more on that a bit later on but uh we've got a bushy museum picture up here now Bushy Museum in Rudolph Road in Bushy. It's well worth a visit. And some of the pictures I was allowed to take while there, and I say again, another big thank you to the very helpful staff that were there. Um, 
So is this in the? Is this one of the roads off the? Up off where the, the shops street. are. Sorry. Is this up where the shops are up in the high street? Yeah, uh, it's right next door to the fire station. Yep. Uh, halfway up the high street, coming up from Falkland Road, it's about the next turning on the left, going going down there, and it goes into a sort of one-way system there. The first part of the road is two-way, but at that point where the road splits round to the left, mm -hmm. it was on the right, next door to the fire station. Right, okay. Say, well, well, uh, uh, how long has the museum been there? Do you know how long? I, I, I haven't gone into the history of the museum in itself. I was more interested in, in what was inside at the time. The content, okay. Really. Again, it's yeah. something else that we can, uh, if we do something in, in the future, possibly about Bushy, um, Watford and Rickmansworth museums, yeah. to do the history of themselves to, to add add to, to it. It's yeah. all about finding out about what's been in... in uh, in bushy i'm sure there's uh, i'm sure there's actually other museums around as well so uh, right okay let's, yeah, let's, examine. let's go inside this is one of the but, inside right. right this is just one of the rooms up on the the first floor um this is an exhibition room and the photographs in there are all of pubs in bushy right now we know that we know there's been a lot of pubs in and around watford we've, we, we've done that one but um I, whilst I was there, I managed to buy a book from them, which is called From the Wheat Sheaf to the Windmill, The Story of Bushy and Oxy Pubs. Right. And it lists the pubs in Bushy and Oxy, <laughs> most of which unfortunately have since been demolished. Some have been turned into restaurants and others have been turned into family homes. The exhibition itself is not on for too much longer, as I, I, I mentioned. Um, so if you want to see it, sort of go now. I think it finishes within the next week. But the, right. this is just a small part of it. There are, it's on three different walls, all, all those. And <clears throat> you can actually buy the, the, the book about the pubs in, in their shop, which is just next door to it. So it's, uh, right. it's one of those things. Having done one about the Watford pubs and I saw this exhibition, I thought, well, we've got to mention it. And uh, perhaps again... We can go around. One of the pubs that is no longer is one that I used to drink in, up the top by Sparrows Hearn, top of Little Bushy Lane, which was, um, I think it was the King's Head, which was a very right. small pub. You get two or three people in the bar and it's crowded. <laughs> Perhaps that's why it ended up as a house rather than the pub still. Yeah, a bit like uh, the old boys' home in, um, you know, it's Langley. Yeah. It's like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of those things it happens all the time i know but again here we've got there's a pictorial history of most of the pubs that were in bushy which is fantastic in that respect to to, to keep the memories of them there yeah if you uh, if you're interested in your pubs then uh, get down there this week then that's the main thing right lovely picture this lulu land lulu land yes we've got la la land in the, in the cinemas at the moment uh, bushy had lulu land what a great Romanesque building that is. Unfortunately, it's no longer there. So um, what, what, what was this then? This was built for one Herbert van Herkimer, who was a German-born British artist. Right. And a lot of his family had various skills, and this was built for, to his design, something for him. It's uh, what we probably call now a folly, but uh, it, it was... A, a fascinating building and it's one of those you wish was still there a bit like the uh Caspary park gates you know it's part of the history of the area and it's gone and uh, all we have are pictures of it nowadays but uh, this was um originally built in 1888 and finished in 1894 but demolished in i think it was uh 1939 so, after the war just before the war Oh, sorry, yeah, just before the war, yeah. Uh, again, perhaps I used um, elements of it for the war effort. But it's a shame to see such a building go. I mean, Herkimer, again, a bit like uh, Dickinson's in Croxley Green, the, the roads are named after the man. He was a very great uh, sponsor of the area and uh, brought some prosperity to it at the time. So uh, do we know why? We don't know why it was demolished. It just... Well, the, 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 fa the family over here, I believe, died out. There was no uh, family left. Okay. And yeah, without that, it's, I suppose, something like that today might become a, uh, become a National Trust building, but um, 
alas, it's too late for that. It's gone. I think there are a few remnants left around in the gardens or, or the grounds there. They have a rose garden in, in, in there, which, uh, again, the people of the museum said it's well worth a visit to go there. So where was it? I think it was up near the corner of Melbourne Road and the Bushy High Street. Right, OK. I just passed the Blue Check restaurant that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, Bush is also just at the back of that now is, is studios, the Bushy Studios. A lot of filming went on there and uh, development of film techniques because uh, we, we have a studio close there and uh, there are some more things right on the other corner of Melbourne, uh, uh, sort of mock Tudor building where a lot of film stuff goes on, digital uh, refilming and things. Mm. Isn't that yeah. fascinating? I've never, seen that I've never seen that picture or heard of it. So that's no. something brand, brand new. Before. Here's someone, something you've heard of. Uh, the, West, yeah. the West Hearts and Watford. Um, uh, I think that says 1863, first published. Mm. Again, it's just a, a little plaque that I saw in in the museum, and I thought, oh, we both we both know things about the Watford Observer, some good, some not so good. <laughs> it, it's been around a long time, so the longevity shows that uh, it's still something that people buy every week. So it's just a matter of uh, making sure they get the stories right when they print them, allegedly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the um, it's owned by News International now, isn't it, or somebody? I don't know, yeah. News News Quest or you can see there it was um, Mr. C. Peacock was the proprietor back in those days. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was it was a standalone pub. Well, I think it was a publication that was the uh, Herald and the local the St Albans paper and the Hemel paper. I think they were all part of the same group at one point. I, th I think they had an office, didn't they, in the High Street in Watford? at one stage yeah yeah i knew, I knew the sub editor he used to be my table tennis coach all right yeah i call malcolm waller and he used to do all the reporting at the matches on saturday <laughs> when they're in their lowly days and there was no tweeting and no none of this nonsense going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah in the days when people actually talk to each other well, what he did was he used to write it, but he was he, he could do shorthand, you see. So he, should, he could write the report up uh, in shorthand at the match, and then he'd go away and and turn it into like, real words, you know. Yeah, old-fashioned reporting as, as it was, rather than uh, easy filming on digital gadgets these days. Yeah, yeah. And then just okay. go and look at it and write the report as it, from what you've seen. Absolutely. So there you go, Watford Observer. Right, OK. Um, yeah. Now we're into a, a sort of 1930s style schoolroom. This picture and the next one. I mean, that, that's probably what I'd have looked like if I was there with the dunce's cap on. And I, was at school. <laughs> then I wouldn't hear of it, David. <laughs> you never knew me as a schoolboy. <laughs> Very lazy person there. But uh, and yeah, I mean, I love doing the research since I, I do for these programs and it, it's good. But when I was at school, I wasn't really bothered about it. I mean, so yeah. what was the what was the part of the exhibition about about this was it about just schooling in the area no no this this was just part of general um history of the area this was one uh, a recreated schoolroom if you go to the next one you'll see um this you'll see this young girl there you can see there the, the teacher there which with what looks to be uh, a cane in her hand which wouldn't surprise me because in those days you did have uh, corporal punishment for misbehaviour and she looks rather severe per person the teacher there <laughs> yeah, it's either a pointer yeah. or it's a, a stick of some description a stick to beat you about yes that make sure you learn i mean it's a nice mortar board there which uh, again i don't know if you had them at what for boys but we certainly didn't have them at uh, my school in ricelip but again mortar boards used to be de rigueur and uh, a cloak or cape to go with it but, uh, yeah, no, we never had those. We had uniforms of Watford Grammar, but none of that uh, mortar stuff going on. So, uh, but uh, those, in fact, that desk looks quite old. We had some fairly old desks at Watford Grammar, I can tell you. But uh, but that that one you'll you'll see because of the height of it and the height. Mm. Of it, that's a desk to stand at rather than sit at. Yeah, yeah. So that that's obviously the teacher's desk, but. Um, whether it's actually facing that way for um, to show you what sort of t 
um, desk it was, because I can't imagine that being in the classroom and the teacher standing there with the back to the class. No. I mean, you, I don't think that would have been the layout. So I think we just. No, no, it's just part of the furniture that would have been there at the time. Yeah, definitely. Again, it's uh, schools have changed out of all recognition, even in your time and my time. Um, yeah, yeah, well, it's all uh, digital boards and whatnot now, isn't it? So, well, yes, that, that is a very um, non politically correct uh, board in the background. Yes, absolutely. Black and white. There you go. No, can't have those these days, apparently. No. But, you know, that's again a change. I don't think it makes any difference to the way pe the pupils learn what colour it is. I mean, in actual fact, some of ours were green. You know, the, the old roller. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, in fact, <laughs> in fact, some of them weren't even black because they were so blooming old and worn out. They were grey <laughs> at best. Shades <laughs> of grey, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, interesting stuff. Right, okay, moving on. What's this we've got here? This is an insurance plaque which buildings put on the outside, on the wall, because if you'd not paid for your insurance and didn't have the plaque and your house caught fire, the fire brigade would come along and look at it and say, tough. If it wasn't there and your house was on fire, the fire brigade wouldn't put it out if you weren't insured. So it's a frightening thought, really, isn't it? So every house that was insured got a plaque. Got a plaque on there. So if the fire brigade came round and they saw the plaque, they would attempt to put the fire out. If there was no plaque, they wouldn't. Mm. Because they didn't get paid. They'd only get paid for you know, the insurance company would pay them to try and put the fire out, save as much as possible. But if there's no insurance company, then we're not helping you. <laughs> These were before the days of the uh, clearly the fire brigade. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a uh, it's just one of those things. I think if you look around, there might still be some that uh, haven't been removed or stolen or what have you. But again, it's just another part of our history that we we don't. Um, so what, what is it actually an image of? I mean, is it uh, is that supposed to be a face or is it uh, or is it? Well, I, I think this is um, a symbolism of that particular uh, insurance company, which is I'm trying. Right. I can't work out exactly what it is, but it's something union, obviously. Um, so you you belong to that. It could well well have been a type of trade union insurance. I, I, I'm not sure, but I wouldn't have thought. Seventeen fourteen. That was uh... so you so that. 1714, and it was the Union Insurance Company. Right. That could well have been the symbol of their insurance company. Interesting stuff. Hmm. I wasn't aware that, you know, if you didn't have a play, I mean, uh, wasn't a great fire of London around that sort of time? Was that uh, 1666. So, right. yeah, we're talking about uh, 40, 50 years um, prior to that was a great fire of London. Again, that would have prompted a lot more people. That would have that would have promoted that would have probably been the reason why a lot of these insurance companies sprung up out of nowhere. Then, well, yeah, it was it's a great way of making money. <laughs> so, well, it still is today. As we know. So, yeah, but I think that again, part of history is it's like the other thing that you'll notice in some of the older houses, where you have windows that are actually bricked up, and it's not for any aesthetic person reason. It was because there was a window tax. The more windows you had, the more, win more, more tax you paid for your house. And it's a shame because it, uh, I think some of the old pubs had uh, windows upstairs actually bricked up because they weren't a necessity needed. But uh, mm -hmm. it's just the way things were and the way things are now. If you look at the bottom of that picture, what you've taken there, it says displayed on the walls of houses following the grate. Yeah, so it could well be that, yeah. Could well, be the great fire, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah so that was quite interesting. As, as a consequence of, yeah, absolutely. Right, the okay. Great, took away about yeah, a third of London. It's a woodpecker. What's that about? HMS Woodpecker, ship's crest. In February, was it February 21st to the 28th in 1942, Bushy helped the war effort by raising funds for. A war warship, the war effort. Um, we had a population in Bushy at that time of 12,000 people. And in that week alone, they raised £120,000. Blimey. 
1942, that's £10 a head. Or in this day and age, it's equivalent of £300 a head, which is whatever way you look at it, for people to raise that money within a week was absolutely phenomenal. And it went to um, promote and help the HMS Woodpecker, which was, uh, which alas got sunk by a magnetic mine towards the end of the war. Wow. I think that the next picture, I think, is uh, a model re recreation of the HMS. So, right, yeah, okay. No. Yeah, so again, this is just inside the museum on the ground floor as you go in on the left. The ground floor there towards the left-hand side is basically all about the bushy area itself. I mean, there are other ones, there's art, art, art galleries and things like that around in the rest of it, but this is where most of the information that I've put on here comes. I mean, I, we could probably have done a couple of hours on this, but uh, I realised that, that we, we don't want to be too boring about this, and I, I've just picked out some highlights. Yeah, people can go along and have a look for themselves. The idea is just to showcase what they've got going on down there, isn't it? Well, that's it. I mean, for, from these point, this point of view, again, can't emphasise too much. Get down to Bushy Museum and find out for yourself. There's so much more information there and things that you can find that um, the old grape shot and cannibals and things like that in, in various cases and money, um, coins and things from the past. Again, a lot of them fairly small, very, very difficult to, to photograph in as much as that. But again, it's something about your area, where you've come from, and what happened there in the past. And if wish, you can then compare it to what we have today. Excellent. Okay, so we've got HMS Woodpecker there. Cobra boot polish. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. But again, um, it was made in Bushy. For the local history gallery this particular model you'll see in the next one it was made by a company called blythe and platt limited and they did boot polishes and goodness knows what and as i walked into the museum the first thing i was confronted with was the, the next picture right and i looked at that and i said to myself what the heck has a king cobra got to do with bushy you don't see many of them around in the fields up, down here Mm. And then reading the small card at the bottom and talking to the uh, museum staff, yes, it was the, the, the symbol of cobra boot polish. Now, it's a strange connection between a cobra and boot polish. Mm. I can't well, see interesting, one. Interesting to know how that came about. When, when was that company around? Uh, again, I haven't managed to find that out. It's just what I managed to get from there, and I, I did look it up just to... to to get that they, they actually started up in the um northeast i believe right they came down here and uh, started manufacturing down here in bushy so suggestions that it would be sort of pre-1930s looking at it mm. but again you want to know more about cobra boot, boot polish go to the museum have a look mm. the staff are very knowledgeable in there and very 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 helpful and I enjoyed my time there. That's, the, that's actually the last the last picture, isn't it? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll come back into uh, uh, let's uh, come back to the room and see. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, interesting, interesting stuff, David. Um, I, I I've got a I, I went down to um bushy the other week to see uh Perul, who's running um beauty spot which is right on the corner of the lights between chalk hill and what's the road that runs up towards Alderham road Alderham road that's right and bushy arch is there and there is a uh, as you as you come under the the bushy arches and, you're, and, you, and you and the road swings around to the right and then there's the road that goes up towards chalk hill there's a, a ray a, a, a run of shops on the right hand side and opposite there there's like a like a gap um before the buildings start on the left hand side and the first buildings actually uh, actually used to be an hsbc bank i believe um it's a very well the frontage is 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 now I don't think you can use the frontage it, it's dilapidated a little bit but uh, you, you can recognize it it would have been a bank uh, but before that there's like an opening and if you go in there it's a bit like a 
TARDIS that sort of it all opens out from behind there and there's a an organization in there which you, you wouldn't know because the, the the plaque on the wall is pretty much covered by ivy now so the only bit you can see is like xley but it's it's metallic it's like a stainless steel yeah. so, but, but you can't but it's actually helen exley now helen exley has lived there for about well she's lived in bushy not there but around the corner for 40 odd years she's a south america uh, south african by descent um and moved here when there were lots of problems out there she had to escape the country and she's i did a little video interview with her but she's she basically runs a business there her and her family called helen exley publications i think and they hire about th i don't know 30 people they have hired 30 people quite a lot of people um and um they've sold they, they, they basically publish books that they, they, they're 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 it's incredibly i don't even know this company existed because they're mm. they're world renowned and they publish books her the lady writes them helen herself and she's still yeah. there runs it with her husband they're in their 70s i think and um the books all written by her or put together by her and her passion is relationships between mothers and daughters that's her passion and uh, all the books are kind of books that you would buy as a keepsake so they've got gold leafing and stuff like this on them but they've sold 150 million books <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> from bushy and and it's you'd no ask, you'd ask anybody they wouldn't even know they were there no. so I, I know when you mentioned parole there and she's she's told us that that corner used to be a dairy and yeah there used to be a dairy farm there when I mean, we go back before the, the, the population exploded in the area and say back in 1942 there were only 12,000 people there which is <laughs> It's a drop in the ocean in this day and age, the way it's sprung up and looked down Aldenham Road and around surrounds up Chalk Hill. It's got to be in that small area, at least 12,000 people. But well, 12,000 who live in Croxley as well. So it's, you know, you get some kind of figure that's 12,000 today of the kind of Croxley is quite a small, you know, you drive for two or three minutes and you're out the, end, the other side of it. That's right. But again, it's, it's how the area has grown and the, the, the reuse of the buildings, the, the fact that the buildings are still there is the great part of it is again it's like lululand that's that was a fantastic building would have drawn people in from miles around and it's gone mm. but i mean parole's using the, the beauty spot there and you said behind there there's a lot of um floor to ceiling tiling which uh, we must go down and have a look at as best we can um and perhaps incorporate that and the, the change of use of buildings and things like that that have gone on so say with 50 pubs that used to be in the area some changes, some are now uh, private housing, some are restaurants, and, but a lot of them just gone. Mm -hmm. But again, I have a book which can tell me all about those ones. Fabulous stuff. Okay. Well, that's brilliant. Brilliant, Darren. It's uh, probably time to, to, to wrap, give it a wrap now, but uh, interesting uh, talking about uh, Bushy and what's going on there. It's uh, so the, I've learned something today anyway. There's so much more that is in every area that we've covered so far and it's impossible to to cover it all in in a short program but again if we spark some interesting people to go out and have a look themselves i think we've done what we wanted to do absolutely right okay all right david well thanks for 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 all that research uh, and uh coming on and uh sharing it with us and uh we'll be back well, it'll just be over just over a week now, not 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 Monday, but Monday week with uh, another exciting episode. Uh, any idea what we're going to be talking about? Well, again, we we started sort of doing the, the, the Crocsy Green and the the Bushy, and perhaps we can be looking at um, the Langleys, some of that sort of thing, just that little bit further. Okay. Should we should we should we go for his heart? Should we do King's Langley or Abbot's Langley? Which one do you fancy? Um, a King's Langley, I think we can start with that. It's, okay. slightly further away. Know, it's got some american history in it you already know that <laughs> I, I know in the church i i, I found the, the the grave markers of the um goodness me i've forgotten the name um one of the american president's family was it the carters or oh, it could be the carters it's not the steam fair that's for sure 
So uh, again, I shall re revisit that, and uh, I have I, I have some photographs of those. All right. Um, but again, I'm very grateful to people for pointing things out to me that uh, I can then research. At the uh, same time as I learned that, I learned about the Washington family tree in the Tring Parish Church. Yeah, fabulous. So, again, a lot of American stuff for me to, to get to grips with. Good stuff. All right, David, thank you for that. And uh, we'll see you in a, in a week or so's time. Um, thank you, people, for uh, watching and hope you enjoyed that uh, little uh, tour around the uh, history of Bushy. So thanks, David. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Take care now.